Thomas Alive to Die presents Vaughn would tell her In the late 1880s, Paul Bonwit opened a small millinery shop at 6th Avenue and 18th Street in Manhattan's Ladies Mile Shopping District. In 1895, which the company often referred to as the year it was founded, Bonwit opened another store on 6th Avenue just four blocks uptown. When Bonwit's original business failed, Bonwit bought out his partner and opened a new store with Edmund D. E. Teller in 1898 on 23rd Street between 5th and 6th Avenues. The firm was incorporated in 1907 as Bonwood Teller and Company and in 1911 relocated yet again this time to the corner of 5th Avenue and 38th Street. They announced that this new location would provide consumers with an uncommon display of wearing apparel from foreign and domestic sources which will appeal to those who desire the unusual and exclusive at moderate prices. In 1930 with the retail trade in New York City moving uptown the store moved again this time to a new address on 5th Avenue. Bonwood took up residence in the former Stewart & Company building at 56th Street which would remain the company's flagship store for nearly 50 years. The building had been designed by the architectural firm Warren and Wetmore in 1929 and redesigned the next year by Ely Jacques Kahn for Bonwood. The company in need of capital partnered with noted financier Floyd Odlum. Odlum who had cashed in his stock holdings just prior to the stock market crash of 1929 was investing in firms in financial distress and in 1934 Odlum's Atlas Corporation acquired Bonwood Teller. Odlum's wife Hortense who had already been serving as a consultant was named president of Bonwood Teller in 1938 making her the first female president of a major department store in the United States. The Odlums also retained a connection to the firm's founding family naming Paul Bonwit's son Walter Bonwit as vice president and general manager. Floyd and Hortense Odlum would sell their investment in Bonwit Teller to Walter Hoving's Hoving Corporation. With Bonwit Teller Hoving would establish a strong retail presence on Fifth Avenue that would also include Tiffany and Company. According to Fintan O'Toole writing in the New York Review of Books in the mid-20th century the artists Jasper Johns, Robert Rauschenberg and Andy Warhol all worked at Bonwit Teller as window dressers creating window displays. The company would undergo another ownership change just 10 years later with the acquisition of Bonwit by Genesco in 1956. At the time Genesco was a large conglomerate operating 64 apparel and retail companies. While Genesco's portfolio included other upscale brands including Henri Vendel the company was largely known as a shoe retailer. Bonwood Teller which had developed a cutting-edge reputation promoting a young Christian Dior and other prominent American designers gained momentum in its fashion and sales during the mid-1960s following the acquisition by Genesco. Bonwood Teller had started to expand as early as 1935 when it opened a season branch in Palm Beach then in 1941 it opened a full-time branch in White Plains. Another notable opening was the Boston store in 1947 in the Back Bay neighborhood. By the 1960s there were stores operating in New York, White Plains, Boston, Chicago, Philadelphia, Cleveland as well as small resort shops in Miami and Palm Beach. During the 1960s the company built a store in Short Hills and moved its White Plains store next to a large Lord & Taylor in Scarsdale. In the mid-1980s branches were located in Oak Brook, Illinois, Troy, Michigan, Palm Desert, California, Beverly Hills, Kansas City, Buffalo and Columbia, South Carolina. From the mid-1970s to late 1980s Bonwit competed head-on with Pierce Sachs Fifth Avenue retaining a role on the development of fashion and design most notably helping to launch the career of Calvin Klein. In 1979 Allied Stores Corporation acquired the company. Its storied flagship Fifth Avenue store was planned to be rebuilt there opposite the new Trump Tower. Bonwick opened at 5th Avenue and 56th Street in April 1981. The new flagship would be the center stone to Trump Tower's indoor mall. 
In 1987 Allied Stores Corporation sold Vama Teller for $101 million to Hooker Corporation an Australian business. Hooker would expand the company's store base from 5 to 16 during the period. In 1990 Bonwit was put on the auction block after the owner filed Chapter 11 bankruptcy. Under the bankruptcy strategy Hooker kept five remaining locations. Northeastern Shopping Mall Magnet The Pyramid Company purchased Bonwit Teller from Hooker. They opened a store at the then soon to open Carousel Center Complex in Syracuse, New York. During the mid-1990s the Manhattan branch was shopped around. The venerable institution filed Chapter 11 bankruptcy in March 2000 after height of debt. In 2005 River West Brands, a Chicago-based brand revitalization company announced it had formed Avenue Brands LLC to bring back Bond with Teller. In June 2008 it was announced that Bonwit Teller would be opening with eventually as many as 20 locations beginning with New York and Los Angeles. Perhaps due to the subsequent recession this venture never materialized. In March 2020 it was announced that NBT Holdings a subsidiary of SUGAR23 had acquired the rights to the brand and were planning a relaunch retail department stores online retail department store services retail store services and a mail order catalog service. In January 2022 the trademark was registered again by SUGAR23 another trademark for the picture link below was filed which will most likely be part of the new Bonwit Teller logo as it has been filed in 2018 and 2022 around the same time as the Bonwit Teller name. If you have any fond memories please indicate it at the comments below. Thanks for watching subscribe and like.